when you click on it, there are already a few things you can do. As with most analysis, if you don't need specific columns and fields, you should and you can leave them behind as soon as possible. So by clicking on the input node, we actually get a brief overview of the data which resides in the little Excel. In this case, you just came from saying customer ID, product, price, and country. Also, you can configure the data types. Those of you who work with Tableau desktop already probably know already the differences, but let me do a, a quick recap. So if you're dealing with text or string labels, you can set it to ABC. If you want to work with dates as dates, you can set it to date, date and time, a number which has decimals, uh, sorry, a full number, an integer, or a number who has decimals, and you can put it to decimal. Do notice that you can already immediately, immediately at the first screen, rename your fields if you feel like doing so, or if you want to give them a more interpretable name. And also the Tableau gives you a very brief preview of the values which reside in these columns. So for example, I here can see in the customer ID field, the one customer one, two, and three are there for the products. It gives a few sample values, A, B, and C. On top of that, you, the main rule is, if you don't need the data, you can already filter it the moment you load your data. So imagine that in this particular case, I want to do an analysis only on the rows for product A, I could already apply a, a filter here. So let me zoom in. Here on top, you see filter values. Now, how do you use this? Because it is pretty straightforward, but you, as with most things, you need to know how to use it. So imagine that I want to filter on my product. I can say I want to keep all the products which equal A. Why do I uh, write it like this? This is because when you filter in Tableau Prep, at least filter uh, from the calculation, because it's also possible from the interface, as we will see later, it says must return a Boolean value. So defining your filters need to return a true or false outcome. So here I say to Tableau, keep all the lines where product equals A, I'm going to push apply. We immediately see that the filter has been applied to our little data set, that it can only provide the values of A, and if we then continue, I will discuss what I just did in a bit, we here see that I have retained only the rows with A. Okay. So, small recap, on loading, you can drop columns if you want by deselecting it here. You can change the data formatting if for some reason uh, Tableau Prep has misinterpreted your data. We can do a rename. We can even apply already some filters uh, to it and we can see a sneak preview. Now we're connecting to a single table, but we will see later how we can perform a wild card union. What does that mean? Well, let me go back for a moment. Although we're living in 2020, sometimes data is still pretty fragmented in that sense that maybe a few of you, be it via email, daily, weekly, monthly, get some exports, it might be that you're doing exports yourself and that you see yourself having a, a setup like this, that you have your data in different files or different tabs. And what you don't want to do is every time you get a new file that you need to edit manually. So that's the reason why Tableau has these wildcard uh, unions, which allow to add the data automatically whenever a new file arrives. But we'll discuss that feature in a tiny bit. Then the data sample. 
of course, you will be in situations where you will be dealing with maybe millions, maybe billions of rows. And as you can see, Tableau generates a preview on the spot. This, of course, is possible because as you are building your flow, you are working with only uh, a sample of your data. The exact number it samples here, I cannot say, but as it says, it's based on the number of fields and the field data types, so it will take a default sample. Of course, you could say uh, use all data if your data set isn't that big, but most of the time you want to work on a sample. If you want that data sample to be only a thousand rows or 10,000 rows, you can set it there. But another very nice feature is the fact that if you really want to do it good, if you want to have a, a random sample, you can go from quick select to random sample. But as you can see, it will be a little bit smaller and it may have an impact on your performance. But most of the time when I'm working, put it on quick select, let it uh, sample a default amount, and then you are good to go. Then, we see here that we applied a little filter to it. We uh, filtered for product A. And as for the whole of Tableau Prep, every change you make is traceable. So you don't need to expect your colleagues or yourself at a later point to visually recognize these filters. No, if you want to see which changes have been applied at a specific step, you will always have a changes step where you nicely get a summary about what is happening or where you can even change your filters you have applied. If my boss comes in tomorrow and said, oh, that analysis you did yesterday for product A, please do it again, but for product B, you can click on the edit, change it to B, save, go to my next step. And as you can see, my filter has been adapted. So things to remember, you don't need to work with all your data at all time. You can work with a sample, mainly for performance reasons. Then you can apply uh, filters and you can see the changes here. So we have discussed the connect view, uh, connection uh, view. This can differ from connection. It differs whether you connect to an Excel, a CSV, it can change slightly, as we will see uh, in the things that will come. Um, I don't need to change uh, the, the filter anymore, so I will remove it here and then. Let's continue. 